Okay, now let's pretend that we needed to put a ring terminal on the end of our filament supply. We probably wouldn't, but there's a lot of occasions when you're building um, amplifiers in which you're going to need to connect something with a crimp. Now a crimp is a mechanical connection, so you've got to pay particular attention to do it neatly, strongly, with a very good electrical connection. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put a little piece of shrink onto our wire and we're untwisting this a little bit so we can get in there. And we're going to strip back twice as much and a bit that we need to load the barrel. So twice as much and a little bit. You don't need to spend a fortune on a stripper, but you do need a good quality stripper and a good quality snip. None of these things are that expensive. Give your wire a twist. Turn it back. Now, this is going to depend on the gauge of wire, but this is about the smallest terminal you're going to find at least for this size of work. So this is for an M3 bolt. And look at how that fits. Isn't that nice? Now the reason we turn it back is to make sure we have enough, let me show you, so we have enough wire to help fill the barrel up. Otherwise we could end up with a crimp in which the wire could actually slide back and forth. It's not a solid crimp. Now to do crimps um, on uh, these sides of connectors that you're going to come across in our kit, it's absolutely critical that you have a proper crimper with a proper set of heads. Now, uh, let's see if I've got... I do. I've got my big electrical crimper on my bench. Pardon the dust, it hasn't been used for a while. And you can see it's got the yellow, blue, red terminals um, on this. This is for larger work. Uh, for uh, 10, 12, 14 gauge um, connections. I think it can go uh, down to as small a gauge as something like 18 gauge. Um, but this is totally the wrong uh, set of crimp, crimper dies for uh, working with small terminals. Smaller terminals are done at 0 0.5, 1, and 1 1.5 um, millimeters squared. That's your wire diameters. Let me get that right on focus. Um, we stock these in case you can't find one. They are around though. And the crimper die that's in here, this is a replaceable type, but it's, it's, got, um, it's got only one way to load. So the way to load, you see the die markings? This side has no markings. So the way you load is you come in like this, on the die side. And you just basically get it level or flush at the end. And you want to have a little tiny bit of wire. You see the wires poking out a little bit? You want a little bit of extra wire because that wire always gets pulled in a little bit with the pressure of the, of the crimp. And we're almost done. I like to crimp the entire length of the barrel. Now don't be over enthusiastic doing this because you can actually work hard in things and um, and I missed so I'm gonna move back a bit. You can so two two crimps is all you need though I have to fix that crimp. And you can see how I've got a really good solid crimp Notice how I had the terminal in up, so that the rollover is on top. That's where we want it. You can test your connection, but you can see almost right away that that's, that's a great mechanical and electrical connection. So let's just put a bit of shrink on and finish it up. There we go. So that's a well-made crimp 
and terminal uh, terminated wire. <laughs> okay, and okay. Well, let's let's clear up a little bit, and we'll do one more crimp. Um, it's so easy to muck up a crimp that we'll we'll do another one. Let's see what I've got in the way in the miscellaneous parts bag. Maybe I've got it out somewhere. Ah, here it is. So this type of 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 terminal is for a spade. In fact, I've got um, one in the bag here. It doesn't matter uh, what kind of uh, spade connection you're doing, whether it's the male or the female, they're all done the same way. So we want about twice as much on there. So let's just take off our practice tinning work that we did earlier. And we're just going to strip that back. So we want to strip it back twice as long as the barrel. Now if you have a stray bit of a braid, make sure to come in and carefully nick it off with the t nip it off with the snips. There's no need um, to tin this wire. You could if you want it to, but it can get in the road of actually making a good crimp because it'll make the wire less pliable. Now, you're going to want a fairly long piece of shrink to help support that connection. So we're going to get that on before we do the actual installation. Sometimes it helps to just bring these wings over a little tiny bit because they're a little bit far out. And we're going to load it exactly the same way we loaded the ring terminal. You see how we've got it? So we're here on this side, we're, we're flush. So we're ready to roll. We've got a nice turn back wire. We're going to slide it in and then we're going to look at the other side. And we just want it to be poking out just a tiny little bit. And then we're going to bring a second crimp in a little further back. And let's see what we've got. So a couple of crimps usually is all you need to make a good job of it. And now, if the wire is going to be subjected to a lot of strain, Normally, uh, in our kits, that's not the case, but let's say your application had strain on it, you're going to want the sheathing of the wire to be underneath here. So you want it to be a little bit shorter than what we just made. And what that'll do is allow these claws here to grab on to the actual outer jacket of the wire and provide some strain relief. What I like to do when there is no load on the wire of significance it's just basically in space uh, so it's just hanging uh, it, all it has to deal with its own static weight is a nice big long piece of shrink like this i cover everything up like that and then we shrink that in There. So that makes for a really good, strong electrical connection. Now, if you were trying to bring the specifications up a little bit, you could, after you crimp it, you could put a little bit, just a little tiny bit of flux, and you could actually mount the wire in a vise and just put a little bit of solder work in here after you've crimped it. 
and that would get you even to a higher specification. For uh, most applications in our kits, um, it, that's not required. All that really is important is that you get a good solid crimp on a nice chunk of wire and you're going to be good. Now, a lot of people who um, aren't familiar with mechanical connections like this crimp here or the ring terminal that we just did or um, with a, these blue junction terminals that we put um, on our boards, you might think, well, that's nowhere near as good as a solder connection, Jim. Why are we using mechanical connections? Well, the reality is the vast majority of electrical connections done in the world are actually done with, um, with mechanical connections. All the high voltage that you see in distribution systems are all mechanically connected. There's no solder work. Um, in solar systems, they're all mechanically connected. And um, all over critical systems on uh, boats, ships, they're all mechanically connected. So they, it's a perfectly good way to do a, a connection. And the benefit over using a mechanical connection versus, let's say, a soldered connection is that if you have to remove, let's say, a circuit board for repairs, it is a heck of a lot easier to unscrew or if you have um, a board connector to just separate the connectors. Um, I'm big into, um, into tape, into reel-to-reel. -reel. And when I work on uh, the better machines that I've got, they'll have dozens and dozens and dozens of multi-pin board connectors. And one of the first things I do is just clean them up. Um, but they, uh, 40, 50 years after they were installed, they're generally speaking looking like new and they make removing a complicated board from the machine so much easier. So there's a lot of benefits to using mechanical connections. The only downside is that you've got to be really careful to do a good job initially so you don't have a bad connection. Okay. So I think we've just about covered everything. There's enough material in the kit that you can certainly do some more crimping, more practicing. I mean, like everything in life, practice uh, makes perfect. So go ahead and use up your materials, practice your crimping. Uh, one thing I wanted to show you that is really useful to know, and let's just do one more crimp. Um, sometimes you end up with a wire that is that's loose and it's not for whatever reason you didn't get a good tight crimp so there's three dies in most crimp setups like this though some of them are very dedicated and they'll just have one um, this tool that I like a lot um, has has the three and the inner one is always the larger. You can see it gets large, medium, small. So what happens if it's just not a very good tight fit? So let's just load up our ring terminal. You can see we're flush. Each term each terminal is going to have its own position in the crimper. So you gotta you gotta practice a bit and figure out which where you want the position of the crimper in the die. So you can see we're a little short on this side, but we would definitely want the tight part of the crimper on the barrel. So we've made this end flush. So let's just put it in there. Let's make it a little tighter so that it fits. So I've got it twisted and turned back the way I showed you before. We are through a little bit extra. We've thrown a crimp on. Now we're not completely crimped, so let's bring it back a little bit. Okay, so that looks really good. Now we've got a stray wire here. So let's just clean those up. Stray wires are always a hazard in a build, so get them 
get them off the bench, get them in the garbage. What if this wasn't a good fit? In fact, it looked a little loose, it felt loose. Well, you would just go down to the next size. So it, it really is helpful to start at the biggest size that will basically work to get everything assembled and held in place. And then you can come back and you can actually go to the next size down. Now, in this case, you didn't need to. It fit nicely, but if it was loose, we'd come down to the, the next lowest and we'd crimp that. And look at how snug that is now. So now, be careful. You don't want to apply so much pressure and crimping that you actually shear off the wire because of course, this metal as you crimp it has to go somewhere and if it starts cutting into the wire then you've you've you know instead of uh solving a problem you've created a problem <laughs> so anyways yeah so get get on the right die it may mean depending on your terminal and your wire size it may mean starting here in the in the medium size crimp and if it's a really small terminal you may start over here so, yeah, so the right die for the right terminal, for the right wire gauge, it, and after you've done a few crimps uh, with your terminals, you'll, you'll be absolutely a pro. Well, well done, everyone. Finish up your kit of parts uh, and practice, practice, practice. Okay, this is Jim signing off. Cheers, everyone.